nice to be here in Nova Scotia. We're uh, at Lockport, Nova Scotia, which is about a 15 minute drive to Shelburne, where I've done uh, shows, TV shows, fishing for blue sharks. We're staying at Seaside Cottages at Ginger Hill. And you can see them behind me in the background. Beautiful cottage setting. And uh, you can see we're right on a beautiful beach. And uh, in behind me is Lockport. So what we're gonna be doing, we're visiting with the Woods family, which are here. They've moved from Ontario. And we're gonna be going out and uh, fishing for bottom fish. So I'm so excited to be here with my wife, Barbara, and just enjoy the hospitality and the peacefulness in the beautiful beachfront property right here. Won't you join us out on the water? Let's go. Wait, do you have everything? You got the fishing rods? We're good. You got the keys for the boat? The keys for the boat. You know where we're going? You know where we're going. How long is it going to take us to get there? Two minutes. Are you excited? Gosh, excited, yeah. yes. Okay, captain. Not captain, guide, right? Guide. Okay, show us to the fish. Be careful of these deadly situations. Okay. How long? Half an hour, 20 minutes to yep. get there? Three minutes. After the life jackets. Are you sure I'm timing you? I'm sure. After the life jackets. You have to wear life jackets? You have to wear life jackets. All right, that'll do. I like your shed. You do? I think it's uh, hard to break hard to break in, if you know what I mean. It's an Ontario shed. I like it. So are we going to be running like 15, 20 miles out? We're going to be running one kilometer out. No diesel water. Six phantom. What are we going to catch? Pollock, cod, and mackerel. Okay, trick question. And maybe a wolf fish. How many feet is six phantoms? Six times six. What's the water temperature? What's the water temperature? 50 degrees right what, now. What are the winds going to be like? Zero wind. Okay. All look like pretty serious yeah. commercial There's fishing boats. They are, yeah. yep. What do they fish for out here? They settled here? Uh, just lobster. That's it. Okay. They don't fish for cod? Uh, nope. No cod licenses. Oh, Kenny's here. I didn't know I was going to be here now. <laughs> Look at that rod. That's why I just bought a new foot fancy line on it. even brought some new gear. Yeah. <laughs> a Callaway. <laughs> yeah. Today. I like your steering system. Well, it's it's a thing, right? Because I'm standing here all day hauling yep. traps. Yep. So I can reach my throttle, my gear shaft, yep. the hauler. Everything's all right here to my hands. The uh, engine, I don't have to do no running around. My computer's just there. I can see everything. The engine sounds sweet. Wow. Oh, brand new. Yep. But it is it is compared to some of them. Yep. The other one I had was really loud, about twice as loud as this. Yeah, it's hard on your head after a while. Of course. Yeah, you better be able to see this. Yeah. You know, this is so exciting. We're here in Nova Scotia. We're off the southeast end. So we're not far from Shelburne. We came out of Lockport. And we're staying at Ginger Hill Seaside Cottages. It's an amazing place. So we've run out to about uh, 15, 16 phantoms of water. Got really nice conditions. This looks like it, it's uh, wavy, but it's just a chop. And what we're doing is fishing for a variety of fish. Look at this. Bonus. Two fish and a, and a snarl here. So I'm going to try to get my line off. So when you go through uh, a bunch of fish at school, it's easy to get a whole bunch. What's not fun is when you're trying to get a tangle out and you've got a couple of fish on. Question is who got the fish? We don't know. So I think my line's still in the water, so this is why I'm just gonna get the hooks out. We'll throw these back. Ah. One. Marco 
two. I'm going to set it on my pliers, which might help. Pretty gorgeous fish. I think they're beautiful. Look. Gorgeous colors. Keep it in the sun. Little guys, you can get them up to like 15 pounds. I think they're just beautiful. Okay. We're going to see what they are. I'm hoping that we get some mackerel. So bring them around the back of the boat and lift it up. Be careful. Yeah, just lift it up over the back of the boat. You can do it. Yep. Bring her up. Flip it up. Wow. Is that a cod too? Nice cod. Yeah. Oh, my dinner! I love saltwater fishing, and uh, I've saltwater fish in a lot of different parts of the world, I mean from Christmas Island in the South Pacific to um, Alaska and uh, in uh, off of India, you know, in between India and Thailand, and even in uh, Israel, and a lot in North America and Florida and the Pacific Coast and the Atlantic waters but today was a real experience to be honest with you that was the first time that I've caught Pollock and that we're able to target Pollock in uh, you know 15 16 phantoms and fish just off the bottom um, because we were away from the electronics we were really fishing blind so you'd hit bottom and you'd lift up and we had quite a chop the wind was blowing I mean not rough water but enough that it was hard to uh, keep your lines on the bottom without getting caught up and getting your lines off the bottom so you're getting the pollock which are suspended and we caught really nice pollock we also got nice mackerel um, the mackerel are usually anywhere from the surface of the boat sometimes you can see them around the boat all the way down but our key was to get bigger size mackerel because the atlantic mackerel here can be anywhere from about uh, seven eight inches you know up to like 15 inches and some of the ones that we got were really good size so what i'm going to be doing is taking a bunch home with me we're going to enjoy some while we're here and that wasn't the only reason why we came to Nova Scotia. It was really to see our friends, the woods that are here. They decided to uh, move their whole family here and it's wonderful. Um, I can see why it's so peaceful and everything. So I'd like to encourage you that if you're thinking of a holiday in the Maritimes, that you definitely check out Nova Scotia and definitely come to the cottages here. They're beautiful and they've got lots of them. And you've got a beautiful beach. And you've got the town nearby. It's a really nice experience. They are delicious eating. So as soon as you hit the bottom, most of the cod are right on bottom, but the cod will come up too from the bottom. We uh, drop it down and then work the bottom 10 feet or so. So you talk about non-stop action. You saw that jig. That jig actually came from British Columbia. We were using that jig off of uh, the west coast of Vancouver Island. It's called Euclid. Some people have named it Eupucalot. Okay, they're on the drop. Hopefully they're polished. They're suspended. You say you Yes, please.
talk about country folk, um, it just reminds me of how things that are simple are better in life. You know, so when you come here to uh, the cottages at Ginger Hill, things are quiet. Um, you're overlooking the water. And a lot of the people are uh, from, you know, either Quebec or some parts of Ontario, but a lot from Nova Scotia. It seems like people are a lot laid back. You know, Kenny, who we were talking to before we left, um, we were talking about electronics and stuff, and he said, I just got a cell phone. And he brought us the cell phone, he opened it up, and it was like the ones on Star Trek, you know, with the flip coin. He goes, you know, I've had it for a while. I haven't even used it yet, <laughs> you know, so, because they're so used to old school, you know, where you have your own phone in the house. And uh, if you need anything, you, you find out you don't need a cell phone. You know, and things are so close. And what I like about Lockport is that, uh, you know, even from the cottages, seaside cottages, you can literally walk to the pier if you want to fish and cast for mackerel, or uh, you can go out with one of the boats, or you can get some fresh seafood from cutters that's right there. Um, or you can just walk the beach. And we've seen people every time when we've been here go up and down the beach. Some of the people have been doing it here all their lives and they're in their 80s. Some of the tourists you'll see will come and they'll just literally sit on a rock or they'll walk the beach and I think they're just trying to get cleared up. It's like a mental cleanse. And that's one of the beautiful things about being here. But I also love the fishing. So few people target these fish, yeah, but they're, they're so problem. amazing I'm to catch and away. also to eat. You know, uh, part of uh, traveling, especially here on the East Coast, is meeting the people. And uh, the last trip I was out, we were in Newfoundland, up in Centerville. We flew into Gander at the airport and picked up by Glenn Medes, who does the boats, the sea breeze boats and the pro sports boats. And uh, just hearing the way they speak, especially to each other, you know, when you're in Newfoundland and the hospitality. Now that we're here in Nova Scotia, the accents are, aren't as bad, so you can understand everything. But when uh, we met Kenny, who was down on the boat, you know, because it's quite a way down when you climb down from the pier. And uh, Wade was inside getting things ready and stuff. And uh, it was so neat to hear his dialect. And then, you know, the whole time that we were fishing, he was busy fishing. He was mostly getting big caught at the back of the boat. Um, just the stories that he would share with me because both Kenny and Wade have uh, been together like literally all their lives. They went to grade school together. They grew up together, same area, fished together, you know, uh, commercial fishermen and everything. And uh, just meeting the people, so friendly, and just seeing the culture, everybody laid back. I mean, it's all part of the experience when you're out here in Nova Scotia. on the big side. They're all great eating. Good for you. There. Yeah, he's a, this one is a fat one. Look at that. You know, I've uh, filmed in Nova Scotia before. Probably about, uh, I'm going to say 20 years ago, we were in Shelburne, Nova Scotia, which is actually very close to Lockport. And uh, 
I think it was after they did the Red Scarlet Letter, so they had really painted all the buildings and stuff, um, you know, uh, along the waterfront. And if you saw the movie, it's with Demi Moore. It's quite a neat movie. And uh, we were out and we did blue shark fishing. So we didn't go after mackerel, we didn't go after bottom fish. And I was very impressed with the blue sharks. The blue sharks were so aggressive. We were about maybe five, six miles offshore that we had underwater cameras that we were holding on the surface because the sharks were circling the boat. It was my first experience where a blue shark would come up and actually try to engulf the camera. So you'd see like right down their throat. You know, we did a great show and uh, I kind of missed that we didn't do any bottom fishing back then. Wait, are you marking any mackerel up top or no? No. no. How deep are you here, Wade? Part of the highlight is being with the woods, our good friend. Jeff is doing all the work on camera. Um, he's moved down here and I'm so glad that we've come to visit him. He's telling you about how good the fishing is, I'll tell you what, it's even better than he was explaining to us. I was born near the Mediterranean. I'm used to eating mackerel, and I'll tell you this. Jeff said that the last time he tried it to make them, you know, having them on the grill, putting a little bit of uh, vinegar in there, done on it, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of parsley, good, warm, warm, cool, amazing eating fish. Look, we're doing okay. That's a really nice mackerel. They're all, they're all good size. I can 
see the solar. time here in Nova Scotia. Um, I, I can't speak enough about being here. See all the cottages just to my left over here. And I think one of the main attractions is this beach. Look, we've got low tide. Look how beautiful this beach is. I'm surprised there isn't anybody walking it because there's usually people walking back and forth. But what I'm doing right now is I'm going to clean some fish and I'm going to show you how we clean these pollock. So this is a pollock. It's uh, one of the bottom fish that are common here. You'll notice that the pollock doesn't have any barbels like the cod do. The cod have those little whiskers there. Also, their mouth is much uh, narrower and tapered, where cod has a much wider head. And you can see that color-wise, they're very uh, light in color. So what I'm going to be doing, because I'm taking these back to Ontario, I'm going to be coring them. 
So all I do is make a cut. I start down here, and this is one of the easiest ways to clean fish. I'm literally going to be taking the heads off, gutting them. So I'm keeping the cleathrum. So this bone, just so you know, that's right here, is called the cleathrum, right there. So I'm leaving that there, and uh, I'm just going to do this here. I'm going to take the insides out. Notice I'm wearing a glove, and the reason I'm doing that is because I hurt myself and I don't want to get anything in my cut. So I'm going to take the guts out all the way to the head, and then I'm going to take the knife down right where the body meets the head, and I'm going to separate it, and that's it. This fish is going to be rinsed off, but look at I've cored, I've cored this piece of uh, pollock, and you can see that they've got beautiful, it's almost like a translucent flesh. I'm going to be rinsing that in a while and I'm going to be freezing them in bags like that. A couple of reasons. One, I love to fry these fish in a pan. I don't need to fillet them. Two is when you freeze the whole body core like that instead of cutting fillets, once it's frozen, it's going to stay frozen because we've got about an hour and a half flight back, two hours to Halifax, about three hours back to where we live, close to Kingston. So the fish are going to stay fresh. And you can see that they've got very small scales. So you don't have to worry about scaling them because you can actually eat them, they're soft. And I love eating the skin. So that's the pollock. The other fish that we've kept is an Atlantic mackerel. And by the way, this, this is a good sized mackerel. A lot of the mackerel are smaller that sometimes you'll catch from shore and so on. So this is an Atlantic mackerel. I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm just gonna core it. So I'm gonna just cut in between those pelvic fins. I'm gonna cut right here to separate the body from the head. I'm going to uh, Take the insides out. I'm going to do a better job when I, I get to rinsing them. Right now, I just want to do the main job. So I'm kind of like assembling a pizza here. Yeah, I've done that. So the mackerel will have a darker flesh. You can see, it's a little bit of blood here, but you can see that the flesh is darker. It's not black, but it's definitely darker. One thing that I love about the Atlantic mackerel is that they're rich in oils that are very good for you, like omega-3s. I love the flavor. These are very similar mackerel to the ones that uh, we ate a lot when I was in Croatia growing up from the Mediterranean. A lot of times we would do them on the grill. And if we do them on the grill, sometimes you do them whole, but the other way we do them is we just take the knife, and I won't do it now, but I'll demonstrate. You, you split it in half, right down the middle. So it's kind of like filleting without taking the fillets off. So one side won't have the rib cage, or sorry, one side, um, We'll just have the rib cage, you won't have the backbone, and the other side will have the backbone and the rib cage. And then they're just done as two halves on the grill. And, and you put your seasoning on. One of the best ways that we like to have the mackerel when we grill them is to just use salt and pepper, and then we dice up garlic. Once the, the mackerel is cooked to our liking, we'll uh, put the garlic on there, and we'll drizzle a little bit of olive oil. And we actually use vinegar, a little bit of vinegar, and also some parsley that's diced up. And a lot of times, if the fish isn't all consumed when it's fresh, freshly cooked, we put it in the refrigerator. And it tastes amazing, even like one or two days later, even cold. And you can make sandwiches out of it and so on. But the mackerel, when you get mackerel this size, Atlantic mackerel, they're amazing eating. And there's, for the size of the fish, you get quite a bit of meat. So you know what, if you come out here to Nova Scotia, I would really encourage you to try some of the fishing. So take in the beach, take in a quiet place like here at Ginger Hill where you can um, just relax. Um, you can, all you hear is the waves. There's no transport trucks going by or anything.